Okay, hello and welcome to my shop here. Uh, we're done with the uh, Helicrafters uh, S40A receiver. That's been uh, all put back in the cabinet and taken care of. So now I'm just making a quick little video here on an interesting piece of equipment that I recently acquired. This is a early to mid-1900s Model T Ford uh, ignition coil. These were known as buzz coils or trembler coils, just by after names. Now this one is not an exact Ford uh, branded coil. It's actually an aftermarket coil made by the Detroit Coil Company. It was the one is the company that made my coil. And uh, I know it's kind of hard to see just when I show it close like this, but it's a solid wooden construction with dovetailed finger joints. Very well made piece. Pretty heavy too. These things are potted with tar and they're very well made. And here we have our vibrator vibrator points right here. These are your contacts that will vibrate and create that buzz sound. That's why they're called buzz coils. And uh, this basically how these work is I'm going to show you how you wire them up and I'm going to give you a demonstration. But basically you take 6 or 12 volts DC from my power supply here or as they were originally designed from a battery. And you connect the battery to here, ground, and then battery right here. So you connect the battery goes through a primary coil just like a transformer so it goes through it goes through the coil and it goes through this vibrator and what this does the battery is connected between these two these two points it's just like a telegraph key how it makes and breaks the connection right there and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom the camera in real quick and I'm gonna see if I can zoom in enough to get a good look at that vibrator so here's zoomed in all the way now let me see if you can uh, see that might be real hard to see, but can you see right in there where they actually move? Yeah, you can see that. That's your actual vibrating contacts. And that's where it makes and breaks the connection to actually produce your alternating current. So what it does is it converts the DC from the battery into AC, or alternating current, because of how fast these points are moving. And DC will not work in transformer, so it needs to be AC. And that's why an AC voltage is required to work as a transformer, just like one such as this. Just a basic transformer. This is basically what this coil is. And uh, what happens, once it gets converted into AC, the AC low voltages get stepped up to around 10,000 volts. And that goes to your output post here. And what this was for was a Model T Ford car. You would have a box that would either be behind the engine or underneath the dashboard. And this box would be a metal box. The earlier ones were made of wood. But uh, the box would contain four of these coils all lined up. Each one for one, because you had a four cylinder engine, so each coil for one uh, cylinder, for one spark plug. So four spark plugs, one coil per spark plug. And this would, how they would actually work in the car, you would have a system built into the car that would ride on the camshaft of the engine that would turn like a commutator like that actually time the points like how a distributor would have worked how it times the spark and it would go through and it would time the spark firing each engine when it was needed to fire and it would pulse the uh, the uh, AC going into the coil so you get a pulse spark pulse spark and it would keep going as the camshaft rotated when the engine was running and that's how you had timing on these. But if you just run them continuously like this, there's no timing. It's just continually going to be firing a continuous spark. So what you do to hook up one of these, these can also be used for fun little experiments. For high voltage, they can be used for uh, charging up an electric fence, keep, you know, animals in that away. They can be used for a lot of things. And uh, just for messing around with them, or, you know, if you have someone you're mad at, give them a good wake up call. <laughs> with this thing but uh, nonetheless they're fun to use so what we do to actually hook this up is we want our 12 volt power supply which I'm going to turn on see the light come on we're going to connect up our alligator clips we need uh, four alligator clips for this we're going to go ahead and connect the alligator clips to the power supply okay so now we have 12 volts here now what we do with our coil me zoom in a little bit on this so with our coil 
we have two posts on the top, and one of them says com. That's our negative. That's our ground, okay? So we want to take the negative from the power supply and connect up to that com terminal, just like shown, okay? Now we're going to wait on the positive terminal. We're just going to set this one aside for now, and I'll explain why in a minute. Now the spark plug, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using a spark gap and a spark plug. And now that reminds me, another use that people had for these coils was early amateur radio operators used these to make spark gap transmitters, an early form of radio transmitter that can be made with one of these coils because it produces a spark. So anyway, back to what we were doing. We want the negative of the spark plug. It's got a couple clip leads on a spark plug here, standard automotive spark plug. We want the negative to go to the same terminal as the common uh, of our power supply, right to there. So that's where you're going to be arcing to. Okay? Now the other side of the spark plug is going to go to the terminal that says plug, and that has our high voltage on it. So we're going to clip that like that. So now all we need to do to make this work is we need to touch the positive of our power supply to this post right here to complete the circuit and start the vibrator. So we're going to go ahead and back out of the video here. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and rearrange everything here so we can get a good look at all of this. I'm going to try to see it where we can see the spark plug. So we're going to go ahead at this time and we're going to turn out this light. Hopefully you're going to be able to see this. I'm going to go ahead right now and connect the positive to the coil and listen for the buzz and I'll try to show you the spark. Here it goes. Okay, the coil is on right now. Can you see the spark? We have a spark there. And our vibrator... Our vibrator is vibrating. I don't know if you can see it, but it's vibrating. So, we're going to unhook it. So that was a demonstration of the Model T coil. I know it's probably kind of hard uh, to see the spark just in the video here, but it's definitely there. It's probably pretty hard to see. I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get a better shot uh, at the spark here. So let's try this. Obviously, we unhook the power first. So let's try again, see if we can see the spark in the camera. Go ahead and connect it. Oh yeah, you can see that spark. So we have a spark there. And it's working. So now to give you a better demonstration, I'm going to hook this up. Instead of the spark plug, I'm going to hook this up to the homemade spark gap that I made. Just taking a block of wood with two uh, screws just connected next to each other like that for our gap. So we just connect the high voltage leads that would have gone to the spark plug to our spark gap. To get the same effect here. So let's uh, untangle our leads. So one, one here and one here. So now we should get a much better spark, much better view of the spark. So turn out our light again and we're going to go ahead and touch to the terminal. You can see the terminal. There we are. Okay, move this wire so we don't arc anything. Okay. See that? Sure we can see that now. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the camera. At our spark gap. That way you can see all the action. Okay, so here we go. So as you can see, this is one hot coil. This coil works good. So now you can see what I was actually doing. We have a spark there. So that's a uh, that's how your Model T coils would have worked. It's trembler and buzz coils. They're a very simple device that produces a high voltage. They're very efficient because they produce such a high voltage from a low input source. And obviously there's no way to measure that. You can't measure the high voltage pulses coming out of this because it's just so high voltage. 
any meter you would connect to this, the meter would go bye-bye very quickly. So you do not want to try to connect a voltmeter to this to measure the output just because of how, uh, high, vo how, how high the voltage is. And a meter can't measure that. So that was just a quick look and demonstration at a Model T ignition coil and how they operate. So uh, I think Model T coils are very interesting devices and uh, a lot of you can still find them. Uh, probably not as in good of condition as I have mine here, but you can find original Ford ones for pretty cheap and rough, rough condition. A lot of times they'll still work. I mean, they're just very simple. They're so simple mechanics that they'll keep working for a long time. So uh, that's a quick look at a early to mid 1900s Model T Ford ignition coil or trembler, trembler or buzz coil made by the Detroit Coil Company in Detroit, Michigan. So, I hope you guys have a great day and thank you for watching.